Ken Loach, hello. Just quoting you first, that you said, I'm pro-EU, um, but it's not doing us any favour at the moment. How do you see the EU today? Well, um, I should have said I'm pro-European unity and cooperation. Um, I'm not in favour of the EU as it is presently established, um, because it is pursuing an economic ideology, which I think is destructive. Many people have said it's destructive. But in terms of people working together to create a different kind of Europe, yes, of course. But you see it as a neoliberal project, you said. So what should be changed today for you? Um, well, they would have to rewrite the opening treaties and constitution. Um, they would have to end the, um, the prioritising the, the free market and the interests of big corporations and put the interests of the people first. And the interests of the people are a secure job, a decent wage, somewhere to live, a secure environment, a secure in, um, environment in terms of uh, the ecology and climate change, and also a, a proper respect for everyone as the dignity of every individual. Do you have the impression Europeans are able to say no today to what is happening? Um, well, Europeans can do anything. I mean, we can do, we can choose to organise ourselves in any way we want. Um, what has happened with the, the idea of the European Union is that it's in the grip of an ideology, of the neoliberal ideology of deregulation, of opening everything up to competition by the big corporations, of subjecting yourself to lobbying. I mean, I understand this city we're in, Brussels, is a lobbyist's haven, uh, heaven. It is. You know, so we should kick them out. You know, like kicking the money lenders out of the temple and just work out a, a way of being together, which to me means planning, it means ownership of the big industries together, common ownership, it means democratic control. If we just think about your last film about Daniel Blake, um, it's not acceptable what is happening to him, but it's, mm -hmm. it's happening and it's only, not only happening in the UK, it's happening everywhere. Mm. So mm. How, how do you see uh, yeah, life in Europe today? There are many Daniel Blakes all around Europe. Um, well, um, I mean, we, as you say, I mean, the, the, the story of uh, the, 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 the film you, you mentioned, the, the one we've just done, is, is about people trapped in state bureaucracy. They're made to feel that if they're poor, it's their own fault, their poverty is their own fault. If they haven't got anywhere to live, it's because they're inadequate. Um, if they got, haven't got a job, it's because they haven't filled in their CV rights. Uh, it's because they haven't went to the, gone to the right appointment, when in fact there are no jobs. So it, it, it's, um, the, the neoliberal project has failed in terms of providing a dignified life, but it succeeded massively in rewarding those who benefit from it. I mean, we've got grotesque luxury coexisting with, with poverty. The way the film industry is working together in, in Europe today mm. seems to be a way Europe could work, in fact, uh, at a certain level. Is this your impression? And what will change after the Brexit? Well, I mean, is, is the fil film industry a model for how we should live? Well, only in a very small respect. I mean, I think, um, I think in terms of uh, the European bodies set up to encourage European film, well, they're good, but they don't go far enough. I mean, they still, European st films still exist on the margins, in many cases, of the big European, Im the big Hollywood imports. But will you be able to produce your films like you did in the past mm -hmm. after the Brexit? Will anything change it now? Um, yes. Um, leaving, leaving Europe will be bad for the British film industry because um, the media, f y the, the, as I understand it, that like two big European projects, there's Eurimage, which provides production funding for the actual production. Um, we, we were forced out of that by a Tory government over 20 years ago. There's the media fund, which helps with developing scripts and also with distribution. It's good as far as it goes. We'll have to leave that. So again, I mean, people in my position want us to pay to stay in. Um, the other element is the co-production treaties. Now, they, pre, they were there before, uh, they, they exist independent of the EU. 
because they're bilateral, trilateral arrangements. So, for example, um, we could still co-produce a film with, say, a Belgian company, but the Belgian company would want um, to get uh, a kind of support from its government, which it would be entitled to. But in order to get that support, we would have to use some Belgian services and some Belgian workers on the film. Now, we do that. If, when we leave the European Union, those workers can't come to Britain without a huge bureaucratic exercise, the Belgian producer won't want the co-production. So, indirectly, it'll affect the co-production badly. OK, thanks a lot for this interview. OK, thank Good you.